and <clears throat> these are all very recent, but there was a long period of doing um, oh, uh, leaves and uh, I guess mostly leaves, leaf images. So this one is probably the most recent one here. It was done in just uh, in uh, May, I'd say mid-May this year. And the track is a stencil. Uh, uh, stencil board is a uh, linseed oil impregnated cardboard that sign painters use. And it's just one piece. They're all joined, you can see, by these cross members. And uh, I built up a surface of uh, colors. It's probably been through the press five or six times all together, starting out with a dark color and then building up uh, with higher value colors. And uh, for years, I've wanted to get more texture, like fabric texture, like a woven texture, into these uh, mono prints. And uh, it uh, struck me that I could press uh, twine in. So I would glue twine to a kind of dauber form, something with a handle and a kind of uh, flat surface under it, I normally used to daub with. And uh, that didn't work. And then, so finally I decided to uh, wrap uh, ordinary twine that's very hairy and there's a lot of fibers that uh, are not compressed and they come off. And they curl around each other, create knots, very small. And uh, so I uh, stepped out of the studio and bought, I had purchased some uh, tile cement that gives off a uh, <clears throat> very strong uh, vapor that's capable, I think, of uh, killing a person. And uh, I, I did have a fan, I didn't have a mask. And I would slather on this uh, paste on the uh, tube that I was wrapping the twine around, a water pipe tube, uh, six inches in diameter. And I began to just hallucinate and get dizzy. And, and uh, so I spent about half an hour walking in a circle, deep breathing and drinking water. <laughs> and I began to feel normal. I never. I never touched that uh, again for about a year and a half. And then finally, uh, a few months ago, I, I did uh, resurrect this thing that I constructed. And it nearly did me in. And, uh, and then I made uh, 13 more of the thing. Different uh, uh, proximities of the twine, different uh, sizes of the twine, sometimes a rope. And, uh, and then I put uh, a wooden uh, circle, a disc, in each end, drilled a hole through, and then put a dowel in there. So I had a roll. So now I've got quite a complement of those things. So what I do here is, uh, first of all, I put the plexiglass down on the bed of the press, and then roll ink out on that with an ordinary rubber roller. Um, and then I put tracing paper down on the ink and then take this roller, sometimes it's rope and sometimes it's this twine, and roll it very vigorously, as much pressure as I can get, and I do that in three or four directions. And then I remove the tracing paper, so I have a piece of tracing paper with ink on it, that's a kind of negative, and then I have plexiglass which is a kind of positive. And so I have two surfaces to play with. And uh, it produces this kind of broken, uh, fractured uh, looking texture. And I build up on that. I lay, lay it down, let it dry, put another one on, and build, build it up that way. In this case, there's some of that, but not as much. And here I cut a stencil of uh, a kind of uh, classical head winged kind of Greek uh, origin image. And uh, I printed the stencil on plexi, took the plexi out beside the studio and sprayed it with uh, a strong solvent. 
and uh, made it meld, melded, you know, it's kind of melty. And uh, then uh, printed that on a dark uh, ink that was on the paper. And got this image, and then cut a, a tracing paper stencil around this uh, and protected that. This when it was dry, of course. And then printed this blue uh, over the uh, protective stencil. Here again, the same basic image appears. This is uh, uh, this was cut in the uh, in the uh, stencil board that sign painters use, and I ran this uh, stencil board through the press with a thin sheet of aluminum, such as commercial printers use on those high-speed presses, and it indented the uh, aluminum. Um, strong, it's strong enough so you can run it through the press and the highs and lows in the aluminum are maintained and the ink appears differently in the ridges and in the valleys. And um, this was built up in the way I've been describing, uh, again and again, through the press. This, these are earlier, these go back uh, a year or two, a year and a half. And um, I've always dislike to see uh, artists uh, directly borrow images from other cultures like Northwest Coast Indian art it is such an integral thing and we've been so cruel to the people who produce that wonderful art uh, and then I found myself fascinated by these glyphs you'd see down in Mexico <laughs> and I found myself cutting stencils of glyphs and is sort of feeling like I should whip myself for every glyph that, that I cut. Of course, these aren't close representations of the glyphs, but in my mind they are. I think I always title them glyphs and uh, fool around with uh, lines going through the plexiglass ink uh, plates and laying those over. And then here is pretty much the same situation as you see in that one down there. This is powdered pigment in the background. And then here I thought, well, I'll, I'll do a kind of capriccio, uh, a kind of uh, lattice that you might see in a Spanish culture uh, grill. And uh, I'm not so sure what I, I think of that. It's uh, a little bit too... <laughs> Uh, easy to like, I guess. I, I like my word to have a resistance <laughs> to pleasure. <laughs> so, um, Jim, I have a question. Yes. In three of these pieces here, like this one, those two, you have a lot of you have a lot happening here, which is very similar. Where you filled the whole thing up here. And here you have this big space, and in those two, yeah. Oh, do you have anything to say about that big space? Just a frame? Well, I think it's a good point, Ralph, because uh, in, in most of the work here, you can see there's kind of a horror of vacui. Uh, I just love, and I hope this talk isn't going on so long so that people will even say, well, yeah, he did it in his work, and he is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it's, I just, I guess, I just feel like uh, give the give the audience, you know, everything you've got. And, uh, but it's not a healthy way for an artist to think. You know, you've got to get on the stage, do your piece, and get off the stage, you know. And and so uh, this is, I think, uh, a representation of, of the of my aging, uh, becoming aware of uh, <clears throat> uh, there, there's no way to uh, really escape the fact that uh, we're finite and uh, I think it's uh, something I love about a lot of religious art is uh, there's the image of these uh, 
uh, saints and uh, people who represent uh, some aspect of, of our life experience and uh, you just give that image and let the viewer add uh, whatever context they want to the uh, person depicted. So it's a kind of icon, uh, really, that's in my mind. And it's a, it's a relatively new uh, thing to do compositionally for me. I, I get a lot of uh, uh, satisfaction out of being able to. <laughs> I have always admired people, artists, who could just do a simple image and get away with it and let it be sufficient. So that's about it. I, I tried to allow these dark elements around there to uh, suggest some sort of agency that was impending on the image. Uh, there, there's a, a context for, for this thing to exist in, and not necessarily a very uh, reassuring uh, one either. And that's sort of true here with this strange uh, color combination. Usually I don't go into those jarring color combinations. That was a good question. Asking. The lines here, I did a whole series of these monoprints with lines uh, going across. And, and those lines uh, represented to me the experience of, of uh, being in grade school and having to stand at the blackboard uh, not that there were always lines there, but sometimes the teacher would give a class in music and there would be the musical staff there. And, and I, I was extremely shy as a child. And uh, to get up in front of the class and try to do something, often there were lines, you know, for our handwriting exercises too. And, and it was the dreaded uh, moment in my life was to know that uh, Tomorrow I'm going to have to stand up there and do my handwriting exercises in front of 25 uh, yawning uh, students, uh, and and so well, I mean, we all when we get older, we go through uh, physical uh, issues, and uh, and then there's the world politics. There's plenty of stuff to feel worried about, and and so one uh, day I just decided to start laying tracing paper down on an inked plexi and I have two strips of plywood on each side that are marked off in inches and half inches and I have a steel rod that goes across and I, and I have a uh, chopstick that I uh, draw uh, across there, half inch or inch intervals. I've done lots. I, I have a heavy stack of these uh, monograms. They go pretty fast. Oh, are there any other comments or questions?